So we're gonna go with the foam roller between these. Just, just keep you fixed in position because we want to try and increase upper body rotation. Elbows up high, shoulders pinned back. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Get to that end range and hold. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Try and get a little bit more. Go try and get a little bit more range first. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. Try and get as much rotation. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Good, you're getting a little smile from that. Push out, lock in. Three, two, one. Pull it back down, press it out, lock it. Three, two, one. Eccentric control on the external rotation. Because when we do these kind of exercises, you can end up like not being able to control it as much. You won't get that overloaded. Okay, so just getting a little bit more weight. Three, two, one. Get that full range whilst keeping that rib cage locked down. Drop back, elbow high, good. And then rotate from there. Three, two, one. Drop down, press it out, good. Lock it in, good. Three, two, one. So then you should feel it just right at the top of your hip. Squeeze this glute, good. Push up forward. And I want you to hold it for 30 seconds. And you can do different things with it. You can either just pop one arm up, keep the cage down, good. And then push forward a little bit more. To start targeting different hip flexors there. And then deep breath in, deep breath out, and over. Hands on opposite shoulders with the elbows high, and then just add a rotation in there as well. When you're forward there, that's just targeting your rec fem, start the top of your rec fem there, which runs from the top of your hip down to your knee, side bends and rotations. So that's when you start targeting TFL, which just sits at the side of the hips, which is quite tight in boxes because we're always in this open stance, slightly flex there. So getting it open, either side bending or rotating, you're just working into that TFL a little bit more. As quick as possible. Fast feet, slow hands. You're going through balls of your feet, heels just off the floor, not going into too much Michael Jackson. Okay, going side to side. 10 seconds. Speed, 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 good. Quick contacts. Five, four, three, two, one. Great, switch, switch, then hold. Hips slightly flex, knees bent. Switch, switch, switching the hips. We're keeping the torso more or less forward. That little bit of a rotation, but don't want it to be going all the way through, just the hips that are moving. Twist, twist, and then hold, yeah? Good. Good. Going to karaoke into my ball punch throw. Similar kind of movement. Still wanting them quick feet, quick contact times. Foot goes behind. Leave foot goes out in front. You create a little bit of space for your hips. Then you're driving through into the punch, okay? So there, crossover. Then we're driving through. We're not wanting to go over that front foot. You've got to have that breaking force through the that front foot, okay, to make sure that you're keeping that body shape. That like goes behind, creates a little bit of pre-stretch for the rear hip, stepping out, and then drive through. Crossover, yeah, nice. Yeah, lovely. Really whipping those hips, whipping that torso through, like it. Yes, power, good. Speed, 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 good. Three, two, one, nice. The reason why we're doing this is to get them hips turning, that rapid hip rotation. Boom, that like it would be when you're he's, when he's punching. Okay, you think about if you're throwing that lead hook, driving that hip through. So on the karaoke's, boom, hips are coming through. So dip your hips, whip, whip, and hold. Whip, whip, and hold. Whip, whip. Yeah, good. Good. Good, okay, wait, 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 wait. You're getting the first step right, mm -hmm. but it's the second step that I need it a little bit more whip of the hips now. So you're going like this now, whipping that hip through, but then this one's still shallow. I want whip, whip, and through. So your hips are turning. Better, stay low. Stay low. Good. Yeah, nice, yeah, good. Whip. Good, whip, whip. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, good. 
Yeah, good. So that's the thing you want to do, like when you're trying to load up that rear hip, is then bring it back to there, keep it there, and then drive through. Oh! Six, six, good. Six, five, come on, oh! Good speeds. Six, eight, oh! Speed. Seven, one. Good. No. Oh. Good. Six, nine, good, faster than last one, yeah, good. Six, five. Oh! Good speed. Six, six. Oh! Six, eight. Oh! Yeah, good, walk it in. 150 kilos. We're gonna go for three reps. Oh! Yeah, good work, well done. Six, four. Oh! Six, seven. Yeah, nice, walk it in. Six, four. Dip and drive. Good. Good. One more. Come on, drive it up. Yeah, nice. So look at the the dip that you have. Instead of accelerating all the way through the movement. Now you are going to have a little bit because you are bouncing off the box, which is all right because all I want you to do is just trying to lift as much load as you can and really drive through that sticking point. So you are going to get a little bit, but I want you to try and accelerate through that. You just didn't get enough speed coming off the box on that first one and that affected what your peak's velocity was at the end. So you just want to try and avoid that dip as much as you can and get as much momentum as you can that from that bounce. That good, it? Yeah, but it's still a big dip. Still a big dip, but I want you to try and eliminate that dip a little bit mm -hmm. because I want you to gain that momentum because what's happening at the minute, you get into there, you're bouncing, giving a lot of speed, but then, but then slowing down there and then having to really drive through and lock out. What I want is there, bounce, and it comes straight up. Aggressive from the box, let's go. Deep breath in. And up. Yeah, good, walk it in. Six, nine. Look, that dip isn't as much. That's good. So what we're doing with Laverne here, doing some single efforts. Estimated one met max on box squats is around about 170, 180. We're going to 160 today but just having that single effort to try and get as much speed into that single rep as you can. I wouldn't advise to do one met max training, only just go to around about 90, 95% one met max. Boxers aren't particularly strong through the trunk and also they're not that experienced in lifting heavy loads. Laverne's been doing this maximum strength block for quite a while now. In fact, it's been on multiple maximum strength blocks uh, throughout the year. Used to expressing forces with high amounts of load either on his back or through the trap bar, but just doing them single reps, around about 95% one rep max, encourage him to have more force and more speed throughout the movement, which will then increase the rate of force development. Touch the box, accelerate up. Push your knees out wide. Oh! Yeah, good, walk it in. 0.63, good. The reason why we're lifting for single repetitions, even though you've probably got another two reps in you there, you're lifting between 0.63 on that one, 0.69 on the last rep. That was as quick as what you were lifting at 130, 30 kilos lighter. So you're lifting 30 kilos heavier, one less at the same speed. That's so much better than just a few weeks ago. Because you're getting that control on the way down, you're pulling it down using your lat, keeping your rib cage down as well. Something nice and tense. Really good control. Yeah, good. Drive. Three, two, one. Good. I'm just wanting to just try and strengthen up that end range as much as I can. They don't even need to go fast. So control. Three, two, one. Control it up. Good. The faster that you go, the probably less glute activation that you'll get. If you just kind of slowly roll up your hips into that extension, then hold, then that's going to increase that glute activation. Try and keep your head up, keep your chin tucked in. Good. Good. Nice work, well done.